This is another 4 player fixed card game which is being played with my subscribers. The white player is an intermediate, the pink player is a master, and the blue player is a grand master. And this time I will probably either go for South America or Africa, the pink player's turn is before mine, so I'm going to see where he is going to add his troops to. And alright he added them to North America, so that's awesome, I get the opportunity to go for South America and then at the same time will seek to capture Africa for myself as well. I think the pink player showed the intention to move his South American troops out, so I removed my troops from Venezuela, so the pink player would have a clear path to bring them to North America without any of us wasting our troops. And then also in the same turn I moved my troops from East Africa, so the white player could at least move his 5 African troops in Madagascar 1 territory further, but in his turn he didn't choose them and I don't know whether he will use them at all and I think he would probably leave them here so I wouldn't get another continent easily, or maybe these are just simply the troops which he wouldn't really pay his attention to, so because of that after capturing South America I decided to fortify 5 troops from Europe to that bottom African territory, so next turn I could wipe these troops from Africa out. Let's do it right now. And voila, Africa has been captured. Obviously it's a bit too weak on the borders but I don't think it will get invaded, I mean with the pink player we're kinda already in the alliance with us helping each other with the troops in South America, then for the blue player as an another continent player it would probably be much better to team up with me on someone rather than to target me. And then from the white player's continent, aka Europe, I'm moving my troops out, so he might not consider invading me either, though he fortified his biggest army next to me, and then he probably knows that as a no continent player he would probably be the one which gets targeted the most to get eliminated first. So I think there could actually be decent chances that he invades me, but for either pink or blue invading me, I would say the chances are very low. But alright, apparently I was wrong about pink. I thought we are both intend to be friendly neighbors but I wasn't right about that. So I'm not sure how he intends to capture and hold North America when he has the South American player as me who was invaded by him into Africa. Too bad the white player said well played to the pink player after he invaded me, so that might indicate to me that the white player would like to join the pink player targeting me as well, and then with that the decisive factor to decide which player gets eliminated would be blue. But as you can see the white player didn't invade me, and then I sent him some animations to show him that I intend to be friendly towards him. So maybe after all we will be friends. As the player who would make me the most sense to try getting eliminated is Pink, one thing is that he was the only one who invaded me into my continent, and then another thing is the position, I couldn't do any serious damage to Blue, and if invading White into Europe, I would get strongly retaliated, so with that the only option is Pink especially after him already trading an A set. So let's do it. I think it's either him or me, he fortified his troops next to me, so most likely he would have looked to attack me, then the white player had his biggest army next to me, so then he would have probably joined the pink player as well, and then for the blue player it wouldn't have mattered too much which player gets targeted, so it would have made the most sense for him to join them targeting me as well. Though that was possible that even with me invading pink the white player would have still decided to invade and target me. But with him in his turn adding his new troops on the pink player's border, I think he's on my side now. At least until we get rid of the pink player. I think the white player still doesn't trust me and more likely would team up with the blue player rather than me once we get to the three player situation. Now I wiped the pink player out from Asia so either white or blue would take him out. And it seems white it is, he is the one to get the pink player's cards. After taking out the pink player he neither targeted me nor blue, so it's really unknown what he is going to do. So that might be smart. As whichever player he attacked, that player would have probably liked to attack him too. And then it would have been up to the third player to decide which player to join and the blue player decided to stay neutral too. So I guess the decision will have to be made by me. And looking to the position wise it would probably be the best for me to team up with white, 
as with me putting my armies to Central America and Middle East, while with him into Iceland and Ukraine, we would only need to guard two borders each against the blue player while each holding the continent's value of five troops. But alright, I guess the white player wants to be without any continent at all. As besides him invading me into Africa and South America, he left both of his armies in Europe instead of like bringing one of them to South America, so what I'm going to do is will recapture South America having enough troops to properly guard against him and invade him into Europe. So both I and the blue player will be getting two continental troop bonuses each, while the white player will have to be without a continent if he doesn't come up with something smart. It would be fine for me to team up with the blue player also, so it's just more about the blue player to decide which side to choose. And then for me to myself it would make more sense to target the white player over blue too with the white player being the player who has a turn after me. So with that I could potentially force him to attack the player who has a turn after him also in order to keep sustaining the balance of the game, so the player who has a turn after white who in this case is blue, wouldn't become much stronger than us. So if going by this theory it would make the most sense for the white player to attack blue, for the blue player to attack me, and for me to attack white. But not necessarily. The most important thing is for everyone to keep looking at the stats counter at the right, and to not let any of the players become too strong. And after the white player captured some territories of blue, it seems the blue player after staying neutral decided to join my side and invaded the white player into Europe. Though only capturing the territories of ones and at the end of his turn still having more troops than me, so in my turn I just captured the white player's territories made of ones also. Now the white player in his turn showed a really big initiative to use a bunch of manual rolls on the blue player so the game wouldn't be that much dragged out with our troop numbers potentially going down instead of up, so I really like it, I think all of us should try making a bunch of attacks wasting a lot of our troops, so we could conclude the game sooner. So I really like that the blue player made some of the manual rolls on the white player also. Now looking at the troops counter I see that the blue player is still slightly stronger than me, while the white player is relatively weak sitting at 4 cards, so while at 4 cards he is very likely supposed to have a set, he might not necessarily have it, and if I over weakened the white player too much, then with him not having a set at 4 cards and being left with 5, the blue player could take him out and win the game. So because of that in my turn I decided to manual roll the blue player over the white player, so not to potentially give away the game for the blue player. And then at the same time that our troop numbers would go down, because if I want to try achieving it, then I have to use some of my troops on one of the players. The blue player is still prioritizing targeting the white player no matter how the white player potentially tries to force him to attack me, so that's a very promising sign to me. It might finally be the time when I start looking much stronger than others. I think for now it's just the best to capitalize on attacking blue. We are both attacking him while the blue player retaliates and attacks only the white player, while I would say he should rather focus on attacking me, so yeah for now that's a very good deal when both of my opponents are attacking each other, while I'm attacking one of them also without being targeted by neither of the players whatsoever. So just now the blue player finally invaded me into Africa when I started getting noticeably stronger than others. Now I'm looking at the stats counter at the right and at our whole troops on the board and wondering whether it would be good or bad decision to take the white player out. And I think it would be very bad, if I took the white player out, then the blue player would win the endgame against me very easily. But I could still attack white and see if the blue player joined me, I think the blue player is very dissatisfied by being the player who gets teamed up on, so maybe the blue player after the white player retaliating to me and invading me into my continents, would team up with me on white to potentially give away him for me. And then another thing was that as the strongest player I wanted to make some more attacks, so the game wouldn't be stalemating that much. But honestly these were very dumb thoughts. I should have just continued using my newly gotten troops on manual rolling the blue player. As what at the end I get is the white player losing my trust, and the blue player at the same time joining him to attack me also, 
as obviously if someone is quite stronger than others then it makes the most sense to attack that player. And then as the strongest player who had quite more troops than others, I shouldn't have worried about the game stalemating that much, because in that situation it's both of my opponent's job to realize that I'm becoming way too strong, but not mine to try getting back to their troops level so all of our troop numbers would be going down. In these situations I probably should capitalize on trying to get even a bigger advantage somehow. But not randomly betraying my teaming up player just for the third player to join him to attack me also, and then I shouldn't have captured that many territories made of ones just for them to get recaptured so easily by my opponents again. So I would say that was a very dumb play by me to do what I did when I became much stronger than others. Anyway, now I'm wondering if the white player potentially gets the idea to try trapping the blue player in Australia. I mean not in this turn exactly, but with him fortifying his biggest army next to Africa, and then with him taking over Africa and Europe guarding Ukraine and the Middle East as his borders against Lou, while with me taking over both of the Americas and guarding Alaska or Kamchatka against Lou. So then Blue could potentially get trapped in Australia slash Asia with no easy way to get out, at least not an easy way to get out of it without breaking the balance of the game. The Blue player just invaded both of us and I really like it, because now it should be even more stronger initiative for the White player to try teaming up with me on Blue again. And most importantly the Blue player still left his army in Australia so we could still try setting this strategy up as long as the white player is aware of existing it. This is my first time playing with him, so I have no idea. But from what I noticed he definitely knows about the teaming up strategies by doing all of these manual roles on the blue player constantly along with me. And then with him mostly attacking blue, I assume that he knows that it's usually the best and safest to attack the player who has a turn after him when it comes to the games with decent players as like this game. Now the blue player is getting weaker while at 4 cards while the white player is quite strong, so I wouldn't like to over weaken blue for him and this is why I decided to attack him over blue. As besides that also what I noticed is that the white player army would be only unleashed towards the blue player before getting to me, so even if wanting to more seriously attack me the white player would firstly need to capture a bunch of territories of blue at the same time invading him into South America. Though the white player goes with the decision to rather manual the blue player's Australian army which is the move which I really like too. I mean most importantly is that both of my opponents would seek to team up with me most of the times, rather than with each other on me. So that's something I really like about. The blue player sent me an animation which probably indicates that the blue player invites me to team up on white. But I haven't sent anything back because I haven't made my decision. But from what I see looking to the situation on the board I think yeah, it would probably be the best to try seeking to attack the white player. As my biggest army is unleashed only towards the territories of blue, so now the blue player shouldn't get mad that I only captured a couple of territories of white fortifying my army next to white, as that was the best what I was able to do. I mean I could have traded in my set if I wanted, but why I would, the blue player doesn't know what I actually have a set. My plan was to appear to the blue player what I'm willing to team up with him, while what I actually want that with the white player attacking blue, the blue player would give away the game for me while attacking the white player back. But as you can see that plan didn't work out because with the blue player seeing that he could give away the game for me if attacking white, what he did is attacked me. So that was bad for me but definitely a very smart decision made by the blue player. Then I still tried to look at the stats counter at the right and at our troops on the board to see whether it would be still worth for me to take white player out, and what I saw that it wouldn't, so I didn't take the white player out but rather go on after the territories of both of the players. The white player has blocked half of his army's troops while another half is unleashed towards the blue player's territories so that's something I really like, but what I don't really like is that the blue player is attacking me. But obviously it makes sense for the blue player to do so over attacking white, so do not over weaken white and give away the game for me. It's just the most safest thing to do. After the blue player's turn it's my turn, so if the white player got over weakened, 
then I could immediately take him out without the white player not even having his turn anymore to do something. Anyway, hopefully the white player still prioritizes on attacking blue over teaming up with him on me. I mean with the white player being the player who has a turn after me, theoretically it would be better for me to seek attacking him over the blue player. But what at the same time I know is that the blue player is a very experienced grandmaster who is really unlikely to break the balance of the game to my favor, while the white player is a lower ranked player who don't get me wrong is experienced as well, but who is probably an underdog in this situation and among all three of us is mostly expected to make the game breaking mistakes. So I think my best shot in this game is to try teaming up with White if possible, so with us doing so he might potentially break the balance of the game into my favor, even though the blue player would still have a turn to try doing something. But obviously in this situation with the white player having both of the Americas I obviously had to invade him so he wouldn't get the dominating position which could possibly become impossible to break without either me or the blue player sacrificing ourselves. So that was the time when I was definitely forced to switch being in the blue player's side and invade the white player into North America. I had a set so I could have traded it in if wanting, but what I saw is that my army was big enough to break through white player and then at the same time have enough troops to survive. What I saw that both of them were at two cards so neither of them would have enough accessible troops to take me out, so unless one of them would have over weakened me to another one. But as you can see I survived as predicted, and luckily currently in a relatively strong position being in South America, while the blue player is in a relatively strong position too being in Australia. So the white player is the one who is in the most tough position being without a continent at all. Now I think that while appearing for the blue player to attacking white, I will unleash the white player's way towards the blue player's territories in Asia. I mean that's still possible that the white player could attack me back instead, but if my observations are right, he is prioritizing to attack the player who has a turn after him who is very luckily for me on this situation is blue but not me. The white player hasn't traded in a set at 4 cards, so now let's see if the blue player still attacks him and over weakens him for me so I would be able to take the white player out for his very sweet 5 cards. Let's actually send this animation for blue. And alright he added his troops on his biggest army attacking territories of white but unfortunately he went to a different direction than I was expecting him to go. So what I see from all of those times which were close is that the blue player is too smart to give away the game for me, even at those times when it seemed when he wanted to encourage me switching to be on his side rather than on white's one. Now I was wondering if I should actually trade in this very crappy 6 troop set or not because I knew that with the white player being at 5 cards and trading in a set he could decide that it's worth to take me out when it isn't, so I rather decided to trade in it and be safe than sorry. And I mean I didn't really want to trade it in because besides it being a bad one, at the same time I would have preferred to appear being weaker than I am so to increase the chances of my opponents over attacking each other. But I just had to, I couldn't have risked of potentially getting taken out by white. The blue player is attacking white and that is very good for me because with that I'm not in a risk to give away blue for white as long as I don't over weaken him myself. The blue player by seeing that we set our troops up to team up on him, I think he should have rather sought to attack me, because if he had weakened me enough, then I would have been forced to invade the white player into the North America so the balance of the game wouldn't become broken. With me being the player who has a turn after him I think it would be much more beneficial for him to try forcing me to attack white, rather than trying to force white to attack me, especially when the white player is in a better position than me too. I mean the white player is probably not really concerned of me just having South America, while I'm definitely concerned of him having North America, so if I ended up in the position in which I wouldn't be sure anymore whether it's safe for me to let the white player still hold North America or not, then I would betray white invading him into North America and fortifying my biggest army into it. And alright the white player definitely had way too much fun manual rolling the blue player as I think he might have just given me away the game. 
and I think the blue player shouldn't have recaptured Australia attacking white territories either so to keep the probability of me going for him lower, but with me having 8-10 troops set at 3 cards it doesn't matter either way. Though before actually going for it I took a look at the stats counter and the troops on our board to be definitely sure that I'm definitely making the right decision. And yes I did, I realized that after me taking the blue player out the white player would be a total toast. So that's a GG. The white player shows a very good sportsmanship by surrendering in a completely losing situation so nobody of us would waste our time. And now I would recommend you watching another epic fixed card game which was played with my subscribers as well. That's another game with a smart strategy and a bunch of attacks.